Look at that! They all look the same! Man, I'm getting, I'm getting memories of last year when I was here. And last year was the first time I was here in 22 years. This is the same way you took? Exact same way I took. I remember that stop there. In San Diego, where we spent most of our life after we moved to America. Trees don't really change colors there. I wanted to put it on this one. Because you can see uh, Hangan, the river. During high school, like, you know, my parents went through a divorce, and so <clears throat> I didn't see my mom that often in high school. You, you didn't live with your dad, though, did you? No, I didn't. I lived with my sisters in high school until I graduated. Your mom was in the hospital already when you were in high school? No, she got diagnosed when I was in college, freshman year, Weird. right before spring break, actually. Why did you live with your sisters then? Because, uh... Because I needed a guardian. But your mom... My mom was in uh, Korea. Oh, she came here. She came here to... earn some money. Okay, we're pretty close by. This was a view. Oh, Standing exactly where I was and so something that looked like this. It's hard without the leaves. Yeah. Some tree that's gone to the right. Maybe this one? Oh my god, you're right. It is this one. I think it is this one. Those are the buildings. See, that's pretty crazy. So is this tree? I didn't have much, so she can only spread it around here. What does it feel like? Feels like I'm just visiting her again. when I used to. So when I was uh, a freshman in college, uh, my mom was diagnosed with brain tumor. Um, the doctor said she didn't have much to live, or much longer to live. Um, they started on chemo immediately, but uh, she ended up living for seven more years. And the last two years, uh, I was in California, about an hour from her nursing home, and I saw her every week. She passed away a year and a half ago, 2018, April.
That was weird because I you know death is it happens to everybody. Everyone is going to die at some point. Um, on some level, it's natural, it's predictable, but no matter how long you prepare for it, whether it's me, I've been preparing for years, it always feels abrupt, it always feels unnatural, like it shouldn't happen. Um, it was weird to feel a cold body. To have like no movement or blood circulation when I was holding her hand. Um, even though she was there, it was like this weird like she wasn't there, but her body's there. Um, yeah, it was it was weird. Where she is now? I don't know. She got cremated, and so half of her body is in the Pacific Ocean. The other half is back in California, and, and a little bit is here. Now, if we maybe talk about souls, I know some people have told me and tried to come for me and say, you know, your mom is in a good place. She's in heaven. She's looking down. And I knew that they said that to comfort me, but I actually just wanted them to say, she's still here. When she passed, I had so many regrets, like regrets of like, oh man, I should have done this better. But also regrets of like things that never happened. Like she would never be in my wedding. She won't. Uh, see my future kids. She won't be a grandmother to, for my kids. But when she did die, I think I just wanted to say I love you. And I think more, I, I wanted her to say I love you to me. I guess I just wanted to hear it one more time. But you know, like, Even if I had that moment, really, I wouldn't have known that it was my last moment. And I said the same thing to my mom during our actual last moment that Sunday. I said, I love you. I said, I'll see her next week. Um, and she wasn't talking then because she couldn't, but I knew she in her own way said the same. I guess I just wanted more. What do you think, though, about, like, uh, people when they die, then? Do you think people, like, do you think there's something after you die? Yeah. I want to, yeah, I, I believe. Looking forward to... life that where we have new bodies resurrected life I don't know if that's too Christian for you video, but <laughs> but yes in short I think I do and I'll see you again Like I, I, I said before that, you know, death happens all the time. You and I are guaranteed to die. Uh, and so in some way we should always be prepared for it. Like it's going to happen. You know, but whenever it does happen, it's always a shock. It always feels like it comes too soon. No matter how much you prepare for it.
and when, especially when someone you love or someone you know dies, it's not just like the end of life for someone, but a part of you also dies. Like it's like building a new like brain pathway in your head. Like, and it's not a sad thing. I think it's just part of grieving. Like you can't ignore it. You can't get stuck in it. You have to learn with it. It becomes part of your new normal. How did it change my thinking? Well, I think the biggest thing was because I realized how normal death is. Doesn't change the fact that it's always still tragic. So grieving, I think it just has to be a part of life, and a part of a, a. I think I would say like a rich, healthy, satisfying life is learning how to cry, miss loved ones, regret things, make that part of your life. It, it can't just be you know, being happy and joyful all the time, but. Yeah, learning how to cry and having a good cry, I think that's so important. I think the most helpful thing I heard about grieving is that there is no deadline, there is no formula, there's no manual. Everyone grieves differently. My sister said this to me, you know, you and your sister and I had different relationship with mom. You know, she was the firstborn. My sisters, uh, the middle sibling, and I'm the youngest. We all had like different sort of relationship with mom and so um, the way that she grieves and my other sister grieves is different from how I grieve. And so you just, in some way you have to just lean in to your emotions learn to say that it's okay. It's okay not to understand, um, which was the hardest thing for me because I always wanted to understand, <laughs> understand why, what I'm feeling and why I'm going through such and such, but you know, be okay with having no reason. Um, you know, one of the other things was like, just be aware of your body. Like, for me, I got like super tired. Like I slept like 14, 16 hours a day for the first two weeks after my mom passed away. And I usually get eight to nine hours of sleep. And so, uh, I didn't understand it then, but I think looking back now, I think it's just because my body knew before my brain knew. It was so tiring to cry. And so to take a break from crying, I'll just sleep. Because it's you that's grieving, and there's really no one else that can tell you how to. Um, on some level, you do kind of have to trust your own gut, your own instinct. I think doing this, like coming to Korea, picking a place from, you know, that I wanted to pick. was help me grieve. Um, maybe part of it is that because it's my idea and I actually got to do it, I was taking some sort of ownership or saying that this happened to me. Um, my mom passed away, but I'm gonna do this. I'm not gonna ignore the fact that it hurts. Of course, you should also always, always have people to talk to, and people you love and who care for you deeply, and which I'm so thankful I have. I don't know if this is word by word, this is what Socrates says, but um, learning how to live well in the face of death, knowing that 
death always comes and so how does that force you to think differently and live differently when you know that you're you're not gonna last forever or even the person next to you are you just gonna say everything is meaningless or or create the most meaning out of it Thank you.